2017 Subaru Outback. 70,000 miles. Where's the vape? Anyway. Where's the vape? Where's the vape? Sounds like it blew a spark plug out or blew a spark plug apart or something. And this is something you would expect on a Ford, but not a Subaru. So maybe this is a defective spark plug. I've been seeing a lot of spark plugs where the insulator is just loose inside the metal bolt part. What is it? It blew it out or it blew it apart? Oh yeah, there's the coil. The coil's broken. Oh, spark plug fell out. Yeah. Cracked the boot and everything. Wow, look at that. And coils destroyed. Here's the boot. So it blew the spark plug apart. Uh, like I said, I've been seeing a lot of these where the insulator is just le loose inside the metal shell. Well, at least it didn't damage the engine, no? I don't think so. Maybe. I'm curious where the other part of this went. Because if that porcelain got sucked into the engine, it uh, might not be very good for it. Good news, we got it all back. So I think we just need a plug and coil. Like I said, I've been seeing a lot of these where the insulator's loose inside the metal part. Come on, Dinzo, get your quality together. But this is what happens when the thing's not crimped tight on the porcelain. It rattles around and breaks. New coil and plug have been installed in the Subaru and the vape is ready to vape again. It's all fixed. Defective plug. You're slacking on your quality, Denzo. I've seen it lately. Get it together. I'm gonna to show you two identical 2002 Toyota Highlanders. Look at the inside of this car. 124,000 miles. Here's subject number two. No, I'm sorry, the other one's 175,000. This one's 124,000. Identical, identical year, identical colors, everything. But this one has, a th what, 30% less mileage on it and it's totally trashed. We're doing a knock sensor comparison here. Uh, we just happen to have two of these. The other one has knock sensor codes and the knock sensors have been changed. But yeah, look at this again. This one is 124,124. Look at the steering wheel. This one is 175. Immaculate condition, the other one is trashed. This is a knock sensor on the good car at idle. Okay, rev it up to 3000 RPM. Okay, hold on. That's 3,000 RPM. Peak to peak voltage is 1.2, let it idle. Twenty millivolts. Peak to peak is 0.18 volt. Okay, rev it up. 3,000 RPM.
That's on 3,000? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, let it idle. Twenty millivolts. This is the nice car, the one that's setting the codes. You're at three thousand RPM, right? Yep. Go up higher. Stop. So these are the knock sensors. And I'll have to admit I probably would not have caught that because you can't just look at the peak to peak. You have to look at the overall you know amount of noise coming out of these these are like what knock sensors are is they're like microphones that pick up pinging and they retard the timing if the vehicle's pinging basically so you can those have been in there a while basically so you can run a lower grade of gas and it'll always keep the engine at peak performance yeah those are a little dirty they've been in there a while So what we got are NTK. Did we find the problem? Go ahead. Very loose. <laughs> yeah, they say that they have to be properly torqued or else, yeah, that's the problem. They were loose. Is the other one? See if the other one is just hand tight. That one was tighter or loose? Little loose. Yeah. Not right now. Yeah, that's probably why. Okay, here's the NTK. Those are not that new. 2011 BMW 528. 200,000 miles, 208,000 miles. This one has a crankshaft position sensor code and it really extended crank to start. Interesting thing is this was at a shop um, about, about a year ago, but the shop that did the work is located about 1,000 miles from here, so the customer doesn't want to take it back there. And it's pretty much the exact same symptom as was previously worked on and i actually got the uh invoice here from the previous shop and they did a real nice job of documenting the the diagnosis and these are the the actual bmw codes and this thing has another code in it now another bmw code for ecu internal failure which is not uh not a happy thing i'm gonna go to live data here and I'm going to show what it does, if I can. So if you watch RPM there right at the bottom, I'm going to push the button to crank it right now. Okay, here we go. So it's, it's almost like what it's doing is it... Um, doesn't get a sensor a signal from the crank sensor so it it gets it from maybe the cam sensors and figures it out figures the math out that's why it has to crank for so long it's like it's substituting the the cam sensor for the anyway let's take a look and see let's look at that that crank sensor it looks like they used a genuine part based off the price, but the interesting thing is you look at the price of these sensors, there's one OEM one that's $140, and there's one OEM one that's $29. China. We're trying to see the crank sensor on this BMW. Can you see it? Yeah. Is it plugged in? It's under the intake. It's several hours to get to it. Why remove the intake for that? 
there is some metal on it right there yeah I don't know what the twelve hundred dollars to I better keep my mouth shut there we go think that I think that pretty much says it all right there it's weird as the hella brand is OEM stuff well we got another Chino sensor and this is like genuine OEM stuff that's just made in China now okay the new new Chinese sensors installed let's see what happens here hey okay, here we go start Oh yeah, instant. That fixed it. So now we got another sensor in there that'll last eight months. I don't know. That fixed it. 2014 Hyundai Sonata. Uh Vehicle towed in states that engine died driving, now crank and no start. And that's not my experience here right now. Now the one thing I will say about this vehicle is it's relatively clean on the inside. Yeah, like it's clean. But it has the most atrocious smell, I think, I've encountered in a vehicle and there's a receipt in here for $2,700 worth of sea cucumbers now I'm not a hundred percent sure what sea cucumbers are but I, I think they're in the trunk rotting so anyway it starts right up and runs I should check for codes we got a tire light um, it's very possible that it's a fuel pump that's dying when it gets hot. Fuel pump control module, something malfunctions when it... Oh, something just malfunctioned. Well, there you have it. No codes. Okay, we're gonna look at RPM here and we're gonna crank it. Now it's acting like fuel pressure. But the way it's stalled, it just cut off. Usually if the fuel, if it's lack of fuel pressure, or the fuel pump, they'll kind of sputter and die out slowly as the pressure drops. Yeah, no pressure. Go ahead, crank it. Yep. Fuel in tank fuel pump is bad. This is a high pressure pump for the direct injection. So it is a fuel pump. We're we're just moving it on propane. It's okay. Yeah, go ahead. You just can't touch the gas because uh, then it'll, you know, you'll stall it. You'll lean it out and stall it. Okay. Bring it forward, cut it left, and bring it, yeah. Well, we have an abort on the Hyundai. With the bad fuel pump, customer doesn't want to spend the money. It's time to buy a new car. So they're going to tow it out of here. But at least we got a diagnostic video out of it a little bit. And that was an interesting fuel pump failure. I guess maybe the reason this did that is because the uh, high pressure pump literally sucks the, the line dry. So anyway... It's not in bad shape except for the smell on the inside this thing. I don't I don't think they maintained it uh, this looks Doesn't look like it was maintained very well, but anyway Back to where you came from to be recycled